kids. You know, we, we have a, a much needed service that we give to the community, but you know, it, it, it's really so, so much more. You know, it, it's a ministry. It's a ministry that has kingdom impact. And you teachers, you may not realize this, but the Lord has you here for a reason. You're here to serve Him. And there's no better place to be than where the Lord wants you to be. You know, I, I pray that you'll look at this as, as not as a, a job, but as a calling. Not as a job when, when he's at his lowest point, but as a place where the Lord will use you, will grow you, will bless you as you're blessing others. And as church members, we're here to encourage you. We're here to support you. We're here to come alongside of you. We're here to pray, 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 pray. Pray for you. Pray for the children. Pray for the parents. Pray for the teachers. Pray for the blessings that will come from all of this. I want to challenge you teachers and members. No, I want, to, I want to charge you. I want to charge you to be ready to receive the blessings that the Lord has for you by carrying out the work that He's assigned to you. I'll close in this. Colossians 3, 23, 24 says, Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive the inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. If you would stand, and I'll open this up in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, we just praise your name. Thank you for the, the just the, the option to be here today, to be able to come here and hear your word, to, to praise you. Lord, we just ask that you put a blessing upon everyone here, upon our learning center, upon our teachers, upon our children, upon our parents. Lord, it's in your precious Son, thank Jesus Christ, that we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew uh, chapter 18, beginning in verse 1. At the time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like this little child, you will never inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. This is the time where we humble ourselves uh, before the Lord. We bow our heads before him. I want to invite you to uh, bow your head. If you have room, you're certainly welcome to kneel uh, with us as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we can come to you. Um, Lord, that, that you allow us to come to you and call you Father. That you're a perfect Father, not, not as uh, our fathers here on earth who are flawed, Lord, but a perfect Father who loves his child with a perfect love. Thank you, Lord, that you call us your children. And thank you, Lord, for that love. Uh, that you love us, Lord, because we are yours, we, you love us because who you are and not who we are. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your love that changes us and transforms us and, Lord, makes us into your children, children of God. Thank you, O oh Lord. Thank you for that. Bless this service, Lord. We offer it to you. We ask God that we could uh, sing to you, give our offering to you. Lord, that we ask that we can give back to you, that you be pleased with it, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all our blessings. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Turn your Bible, please, to Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 18. As we look at that scripture that I read earlier, there's a, a Bible in the pew back there for you if you don't have one. Matthew chapter 18, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right there at the first of the New Testament. As we're talking about the greatest this morning, you know, there, there is uh, those who, who uh, are called the goat, greatest of all time in their respective fields. And so uh, football with Tom Brady or uh, uh, basketball uh, with 
maybe LeBron or uh, whoever you pick in what sport or what uh, community. Uh, but it's interesting what the world says is the greatest and then what the Bible calls the greatest. And so we're going to look this morning. I want you to ask yourself, well, how great am I? Uh, how great uh, are you? Um, the scripture again, at this time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Don't you love these guys that follow Jesus around and they're so worried about ministering to other people? And also, which one of us is going to be the greatest, right? Uh, human nature is human nature, uh, and God does save our soul. Uh, sometimes it takes a long time for that to work its way all the way out through the way we act. Amen? Uh, especially how I open my mouth. I mean, how we open our mouths. Amen. Amen, Amen from Francis. Uh, he go, it, verse 2, it says in... Chapter 18, it says, And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like this, like children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And I, I think it's great that uh, Jesus uses a, a living child as an example. Uh, you can almost hear him saying, Okay, you know, here's the 12 I've picked. One of them's a devil, but the other 11 aren't much better, right? And, and so he's, he's giving this lesson to him, and, and he says, you've got to be like a child. Now, children are great, and, and uh, they, can, they can be a, a great blessing. They can also be uh, very humbling. Uh, they can be encouraging. Uh, we're blessed to have one of our children with us this morning who drove in uh, from New Orleans. Glad that Hannah is here uh, this morning for her grandmother's birthday was this uh, week, uh, and her grandmother turned 79. I thought it was 80, but I got set straight. Uh, she's 70. My mother is 79, and so Hannah came in for that birthday. Um, but sometimes children don't understand everything, but they kind of can get the big picture, right? And that's refreshing. But sometimes it's a little bit exasperating. I was talking to one mother, and she said she had taken her five-year-old to the doctor's office, and they were sitting there, and the lady sitting next to him was, was as the Bible says, great with child. And so uh, he, her son looked over at the lady and kind of got big-eyed and said, are, are, is there a baby in your tummy? And she said, yes, there is. He said, and he just sat there for a minute, and then he looked back at her and he said, is, is it a good baby? And she said, she is a good baby. She's a very good baby. He said, what? He said, if she's a good baby, why did you eat her? <laughs> come here, come here. Sit over here on this side. Sit on this side. So uh, sometimes children, I mean, they, they do simplify. Sometimes they can miss the mark a little bit, right? Uh, sometimes these disciples are uh, children. You know, God wants us to be childlike, not childish. Amen? Uh, and sometimes these disciples are childish. So he tells us, and he, he's going to give us a few things using this child. What, what is greatness? Uh, and, and look what he says. He called the little child, verse 2, and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like this child, or uh, un unless you convert, uh, some translations say, and become like this child. But the, the word there for child is actually a word that means little bitty, like a toddler, not much older, pre-K, right? So uh, unless you become like this little pre-K kid, uh, you can't enter the kingdom uh, of heaven. In other words, what does a toddler know? I mean, a toddler doesn't know a lot, right? They're working on their colors. They're working on numbering, one, two, three, four. I mean, when they get into, up into kindergarten, um, they, they, you know, if, if you knew your numbers and you knew your alphabet uh, in kindergarten, you were like really ahead, right? Uh, Hannah is here. I'm so glad you're here, honey, because you so impressed the teachers because the teacher said, you know, one, two, three, four, who knows what comes after 10? And the little boy next to Hannah said, I know 11. And, and, uh, and she said, no, it's Jack. 
because mom had been teaching her her numbers with a deck of cards. So the Baptist preacher kid's saying, nah, yeah, I know what comes after 10, Jack, queen, king, and ace. I mean, so luckily, you know, Hannah's put herself through college playing poker, and that worked out well. <laughs> uh, that last part's a joke, but the first part was a true story. So uh, when Jesus says, what is greatness, he's saying greatness trusts God. If you want to be great, don't trust yourself. Lean not on your own understanding, the Bible says, but you trust in the Lord. And the, the, a child is so dependent, they, they don't understand uh, what it's like not to be. They're not ashamed of it. They don't know any different. You know, if they want something, they know that a parent has to provide it. Uh, the King James says that, uh, that uh, if anyone wants to be the greatest in the heaven, they need, to be, they need to convert like a little child. I like that. They need to convert. Some translations say they need to turn and be like a little child. In other words, they need to realize that everything I have is going to be dependent on God. That whether I recognize it or not, I need to look to him. And so uh, children don't have any problem with that. I, I find that what keeps most people out of heaven, this is just me personally and, and sharing Christ with people, what keeps most people out of the kingdom of heaven is they don't want to be dependent on God. Uh, especially the more successful they are in this life, the less they see they need God. Sometimes when you're at the bottom, the only way, place to look is up and those folks seem to understand that, like children, they really don't have anything to offer God. They just have to come to him and be dependent on him. Well, that's what, what children do. Uh, children understand uh, that they're dependent, and their greatness is not their own. They're not the greatest. They, they, they're, it's not because they're, you know, this, you know, little kids used to do that thing, my dad can beat up your dad, Right? And, uh, and, well, you know, my, my dad's, uh, and all these things, I, I remember the kid doing that. And, and uh, one man was at his house, he got a knock on the door, and, and at his front door is this little kid and this great big man. And he, the great big man looks at him, he says, my son said, your son told him that you have a list of all the people in the neighborhood, the dads that you can beat up, and that I'm on it. What do you say about that? And that little dad looked up at the big dad and said, I'm taking you off my list. <laughs> In other words, I, there's always somebody bigger, and if we think we're, we can be dependent and trust ourselves to always win, we can't. Children understand that, that it, is the, it is dependent on their parents for their comfort, their sustenance, their blessings. All those things come from their parents earthly parents, how much more should we understand our earthly heavenly father wants to bless us and all the things that we get come from him. The, the, even the opportunity to work, which is a blessing, the opportunity to work comes from the Lord. So uh, children, if you're going to be great, you just need to first say, okay, Lord, I'm going to be dependent on you, not just on my own strength, not on my own instincts, not on my own abilities. All those are a blessing and a gift from you, but I'm Thankful, and I'm trusting in the one who gave me those, not in those things themselves. I think we, we have a little trouble trusting uh, in that. But, but we can, if a child can do it, an adult can do it. Amen? Amen? If a child can do it, an adult can do it. The robin and the sparrow were talking, and the robin said to the sparrow, he says, I'd really like to know what these human creatures are so anxious about. Uh, they rush about and worry so. I, the sparrow said to the robin, I think it must be that they don't have a heavenly father who cares for them like the one that cares for you and me. You see, Jesus said that God's going to take care of us and that we need to focus on him and he'll take care of the rest. And so uh, I think what happens with us as adults is that uh, children believe it and we're a little too wise to sometimes because everybody's let you down. You've let yourself down. So it gets hard to believe that God won't let you down. But the scripture says he won't, which means he won't. That we can trust and depend, if you want to put it in a positive, God is faithful and always will be. Amen? Uh, second thing, how, you, how can you be great? Well, if you're going to be great, look what it says. I, I tell you the truth, unless you change, become like a little child, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child, is the greatest. Now, that, that word humble, 
in the original language there, it really means to be made low, to make low, to, to bow down, like, like just to say, uh, uh, to be, or you could even translate, to be emptied of. See, if we want to be filled up with the good things that God has, sometimes we have to be emptied of the stuff that we think is so important. We, we have to be humble to say, okay, God, I'll receive from you what you have for me, not what I want for me, but what you have for me. Who made you the way you are? Who made you how tall you were, the color of your skin? Who gave you the sense of humor that you have? Who gave you the intellect, the, the family that he put you in? Um, God did. And none of that's a mistake or an accident. You say, well, I don't have these gifts or I don't have that ability. You know, Moses tried that and said, God, I, I can't speak for you. I, 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 I can't speak for you because Moses had some sort of, maybe some folks think, stuttering, but he had some sort of speech impediment, and God said, who makes a man? I made you that way on purpose. Why would he do that? You know why? Because Moses had to be humble and say, Lord, I'm dependent on you, but also, God, in my own strength and ability, I can't. I need you to. I need you to do it. James chapter 4 says this, but God gives more grace. To us, he gives more grace. The scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to to the humble. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's just thinking about yourself less. One wag said it that way. Did you hear what I said? Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking about yourself less. So you focus on the Lord. And, and children are humble. Uh, they're humble, and they, uh, they are trusting they, they, have, they don't have fear or doubts. When uh, Carla and I were first married, we had some friends, and uh, they had two boys, Luke and Jake. Are those great manly names or what? Luke and Jake. I'd already decided that's what we were going to name our boys. <laughs> and three daughters later, we still are holding Luke and Jake in reserve. In case, like Abraham, when I'm 99, God blesses me with a son. <laughs> But Luke and Jack, and we would go to their house, and they had a big high ceiling, the big uh, cathedral ceiling in their house, and, and, uh, or we'd be outside, and, and one of them was like three, and one was two. I mean, they were just like a year apart, and, and the dad would grab one, and he would take that kid, and he would, and, the, and pretty strong, muscly guy, and he'd take that kid, and he'd go, rah, and he would throw that kid up eight, ten feet in the air. And the first time he did that, I thought my wife was going to pass out. And he, he threw that kid up, and he caught him. He said, ah! And he threw him up again and caught him. And, and I think it took all my wife's self-control not for her to say, run over and tackle him and say, what are you, crazy person? What are you doing? Endangering your child. Now, the child was very, very worried about it. Because every time he'd throw him up, he would laugh all the way up and laugh all the way down. He'd laugh all the way up. And then the next one, he said, my turn, my turn. And they all the way up and all the way down. It never occurred to them that their dad may not catch them. It just it wasn't, it wasn't factored in. He's always caught them. He's always going to catch them. He's their father. He's big. He's strong. He, he's a, and you know what? He always did as far as I Now, I think at some point, you know, when they get 15, 16, you're probably not throwing them up anymore. But those, that two and that three-year-old boy knew something about their dad that they knew they could trust him, and they knew he'd always catch him, and they had faith in him. That's something that we can learn as believers, that if we've trusted God and we trust him to purchase for us a place in heaven, that, that when we feel thrown up in the air, that God will catch us. He's not going to let us go. The, the Bible says that, that neither life nor death, angels or demons, the future nor the past, uh, n nothing uh, in all creation can separate us from the love of God, the present or the past, the future. Uh, nothing can separate us from his love. In other words, he's always going to catch us. That means we can't mess up so bad God says, I don't want anything to do with you. Nope. Now, we mess up so bad he may say, I'm going to have to discipline you. But he always catches us. 
And children just instinctively know that. Nobody taught those boys, well, you can trust dad. Nobody taught them that, you know, when he throws you as high as the ceiling is right here, that he's going to, how high can dad, they didn't think, you know, I'm calculating my weight and let's see, mass times weight times inertia is, ah, nope, they just, dad threw me, he's going to catch me. Friends, we can trust the Lord. You can trust the Lord. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God and God wants you to be great, then trust him. Put your faith in him. And whatever situation you find yourself thrown into, say, Lord, you're greater than this situation and I know you'll catch me. Whether it be in your, uh, in your health, in your finances, in your relationships with your family, with your loved ones, wh- whatever it may be, God is greater. Amen? And the last thing I see that is great here is the, really the first part of this verse. Look what it says in verse 2. He called a little child, and he had him come stand among them. Now, Jesus calls a a little two-year-old over, a little three-year-old over, a little four-year-old, something around that age, to come over and stand before him. And that kid came right to him. We we find in Scripture that Jesus loved, we sang Jesus loves the little children, right? And he's got the whole world in his hands. But I, I love those songs, because they're true. Jesus loves me, this I know. What? Yeah, that's right. He does love you, doesn't he? Jesus loves all the children, all the little children of the world. Yellow, red, black and white. They are what? Yeah. Jesus loves what? Yeah. Why? Because it's his nature. Because he's loving So we sing about those things, but what this child does is he comes when Jesus calls. He's great in the kingdom because he comes when Jesus calls. He, later in this, uh, in this verse, uh, verse 6, it says, If anyone uh, causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone hung around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Wow. But, but this little... Little one comes, in my mind, I imagine him as a little boy, comes and stands in the midst of those disciples, all these big, uh, big men looking down at this little boy. And Jesus says, you want to be great in the kingdom of heaven? You be like him. Because he comes when I calls and he, didn't, he wasn't questioning. Later it says that Jesus scooped up the children. The, the disciples tried to keep them away. In fact, if you look over in this chapter, uh, just flip over a page. It says, well, I flipped to the wrong page. There we go. He says in verse uh, uh, 19, I tell you again, if two of you agree about anything, if you ask for it, it will be done by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with them also. Uh, in other words, when when a couple little children come to pray and get in with the day, Jesus is there in a special way. And I always think about that when Brother Phil uh, does uh, children's uh, worship at, at the... Uh, I've done it too. Let me tell you what, that'll make you a better Bible story teacher, preacher, because a three-year-old, you don't have a lot of time to make your point. Kind of like some of you, I mean. Much of and... and and so, but I'll always ask Phil, so what happened today? You know, there's, there's always a good story, you know. Uh, what, what happened today? And, you know, who was crying, the teachers or the kids? But, but think about what is greatness. Greatness for this child was that he was willing to come. Greatness it, uh, over uh, earlier in, this, uh, in, in uh, Matthew and over in Luke uh, and uh, and it, Jesus picks up the children. And he says, suffer the little children not to come to me. Let them come to me. And he picks them up and it says he blesses them. And it started to bother the disciples because all these parents are coming out for this prophet to bless them. And Jesus is like, no, no, we're going to take time. Now, in, in their culture, men were first, women were second, children were a distant third. They just weren't important. You didn't, you, children should be seen and... But they really were in that culture. 
right? If we hear a baby crying in here, I just say he's praising or she's praising the Lord. Amen? I love children in worship. This is where they ought to be. Amen? Maybe they'll share their coloring sheet with their mom or dad. I don't know if they're a really good kid. But they should be in God's house knowing that he loves them. But greatness comes when you hear Jesus call you and you answer the call. How can you be great in the kingdom of heaven? When he talks about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about being with God for eternity. How do you be great? Well, you just have to be humble enough and small enough to know who you are. You, you just have to be, you just have to trust in what Jesus has done on the cross, that he's done it for you. And you have to realize it's not enough just to know about it, but when Jesus calls to you and says, you, come put your trust and your faith in me, that like this little child, you go to Jesus. Have you done that? Why not? Children don't offer anything to Jesus but their love. God doesn't want anything from you but you to return the love that he wants to pour onto you. God wants you to love him back. And you do that by trusting what Jesus did on the cross. Have you done that? If not, why not? And if not, why not today? Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for children. I thank you, Lord, for those that minister to children, like our teachers here that we've talked about, our school teachers and our daycare teachers, moms and dads and grandparents. Lord, I thank you for the influence that we've had in our life by some adult reminding us about God's love. Be it a Sunday school teacher or a daycare teacher or um, uh, a pastor. Lord, I, I thank you for those that were influential in children's lives and those children then made a difference in others' lives. Father, I ask that we could be childlike in our faith, that you would refresh our faith. Lord, fill us up with that with the kind of faith, Lord, that you're looking for. A humble faith that receives you, Lord Jesus, as our Savior and our boss. A humble faith that says that, Lord, wherever you lead, I'll go. That, Lord, you are my Savior, and I'll come when you call. I ask it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand as we sing our hymn of invitation? This time is for you. If you want to know more about trusting Christ as Savior, um, then, then this time is for you. you. You come as we sing. We're going to be dismissed with the blessing. I want to invite you again. Uh, we have a fellowship meal. Everything's provided. Uh, and so um, uh, if you exit the sanctuary doors and go to your right all the way down, um, we've got plenty of places to sit. And I want to encourage you, uh, there are some uh, tables for the teachers to sit. And I want uh, to encourage you to sit with those teachers and, uh, and say hello, get to know them a little bit as well. Uh, and you'll see the names. Um, there's some ladies down there, Terry and uh, Stacy, and some of the others that are down there. Uh, Karen King have got the meal all ready to go. And so uh, ask them where to sit or what to do. If you have any questions, don't ask me. <laughs> so, because I'm not in charge of that. So, uh, let's be dismissed with a blessing. Father, we just thank you. We thank you so much for all our blessings. I thank you, Lord, that we can come to you as little children. But Lord, that we can come to you not knowing everything or understanding everything, but knowing that we want to love you and we want your love. Lord, I, I pray that your love would fill these that are here now. Bless them, O oh God. Let your love uh, wash over them and, and remind them, Lord, how special they are to you. Bless them throughout this week. I, I ask God that you would also bless our food and the, the, uh, the dinner that we're about to uh, Lord, to celebrate and eat together. I, I pray, God, that you would bless that time as well and that food. For we ask all of this in the name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. You're dismissed. <laughs>